Hi, I'm Carl. In this video, we're going to have a look at questions 55 to 58 of section 3 of the purple booklet. This is a question about the hydrolysis of sucrose to produce one molecule of glucose and one of fructose. I've copied out some of the equations here that we need. Question 55 asks, uh, what is the initial rate of hydrolysis of sucrose in a one molar sucrose solution at a pH of 3? Okay, so if we're looking at rate, we need to use the rate equation that they've given us, and it's here. Um, with the information that we know, we know a value for K, we know a value for S, which is 0.1 moles. So the bit of this question we need to work out is what is the concentration of hydrogen ions? So the pH is calculated as the negative log to the base 10 as the concentration of hydrogen ions. If we know the pH is three, then we know that negative three will be the log to the base 10 of hydrogen ions. Therefore, the concentration of hydrogen ions will be 10 to the negative three, or one times 10 to the negative three. So if we plug this into our rate equation, we know that the value for K is 1.4 times 10 to the minus five, multiplied by 0.1 for the concentration of sucrose, multiplied by the concentration of hydrogen ions. This will give us uh, an answer of 1.4 times 10 to the minus 9. In that case, it gives us an answer of A for number 55. Number 56 then says, as the hydrolysis of sucrose progresses, the rate of change of the concentration of glucose will be equal to what? So this talks about rates of changes and whether or not they're the same or an opposite side. So think of it like this, you've got one mole of sucrose here and um, that is broken down to produce one mole of glucose and one of fructose. Therefore, the rate of breakdown of sucrose will be the same as the rate of formation of glucose. So that means the rate of change will be the same. The rate of change of the um, concentration of glucose will be the same as the rate of change of sucrose. But of course, as one decreases, the other will increase as sucrose is converted into glucose and they'll have the opposite sign. Therefore, the answer for 56 is going to be B. And this is for 55. Great. For 57, then it says, together with stoichiometric equation and the rate equation, indicate that as the hydrolysis of sucrose progresses, and then it talks about the changes in the concentration of sucrose and in the concentration of the hydrogen ions. Well, we know as sucrose is broken down, um, the concentration of sucrose has to decrease. So that eliminates two of them. Now to look at the concentration of hydrogen ions, let's think about whether or not it would actually increase. Looking at the equation, we can see that there are no hydrogen ions used up or broken down or produced even. Um, so the concentration of hydrogen ions from this equation um, won't change. There's no reason to think that. Some people get confused because there's water in the equation. That's normal in a hydrolysis reaction and it's separate to the action of a proton. So that means that while the concentration of sucrose will decrease, the concentration of protons or hydrogen ions will remain constant. So that means for 57, we get an answer of C. Then finally, for 58, it says, although water appears as a reaction to the stoichiometric equation, its concentration does not appear in the rate equation. And then it asks why. So let's go through the different answers. Part A says water is automatically included in the hydrogen ion concentration. Of course, that's not true. Um, water is a reactant in this, as you can see on the left-hand side of the equation. And the hydrogen ions talk about the pH of the solution. And it says in the stem that this has to take place in an acidic solution. So that's why the pH is a bit weird. Um, water is, of course, a reactant. It's not included in the rate equation. Um, not because of the hydrogen ion concentrations. The answer is definitely not A. It says for B then, that overall no water is consumed by the chemical reaction. We know from the equation that's not true. Moving on to C then, um, we can see that H2 is not a reaction in the rate determining step of the reaction. And while this may be a simplified diagram, uh, it does seem to be just a single step. Um, although they may have left out other steps, so we don't know whether or not this is the rate determining step. And while, of course, in the rate equation, you will get some reactants that are um, in the rate determining step, 
H2O, um, it, the concentration of it in an aqueous solution won't really change. By far, um, the most common molecule you'll find there is water. Most of the molecules there are water, so if some are used up, it's not going to change the overall concentration of the water really. So that points us to the answer D, saying that the concentration of H2O is so high that it remains effectively constant during the reaction. And so there's no point in having a change in water concentration as part of the rate equation because it's not really something you could measure and so it's not useful in the equation at all. So that means that the answer for number 58 is going to be D, that the concentration of the water is so high that it remains effectively constant throughout the reaction, which is true. So there were some questions about the hydrolysis of sucrose. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.